Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Alicia from Alicia Be Creative and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how I'm creating this super cute little camper mug, of course hot chocolate designed. So I love making these sort of hot cocoa inspired tumblers. I've made several different versions across my time as a tumbler maker and of course I was inspired by yet another vinyl pattern that just made me realize I need to recreate yet another design that is hot chocolate inspired. The weather of course is getting cooler and it is almost the season for hot chocolate and sitting in flannel blankets while watching Christmas movies. So of course I have to go ahead and get a jump on some of my holiday designs. So everything I use in today's tutorial will be listed and linked down in the description box down below. You can of course check that description box out for discount codes as well as links to all of my social media. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's tutorial. So to get started, we are going to start with this 14 ounce camper mug from Maker Flow Crafts. And I'm just going to take the top off, remove that little bottom silver piece that they use to cover where the cup is sealed. And we're gonna give this a nice sand. Right now we're just trying to sand off any of the shininess of the cup. And then we're gonna wipe this down with 91% rubbing alcohol to remove all of the debris that we sanded off. Once I've gotten this nice and cleaned off, I am gonna take this outside and spray an ombre. I'm using two colors, Rustic Pink from rust and we're using Island Girl from Color Shot. So this is the super cute pattern that I got from Vinyl Gallery. It is linked down in the description box and I of course was inspired to use this to create a super cute little camper mug hot chocolate themed. So we're gonna cut this vinyl pattern in half to kind of start so we can kind of decide how much of this vinyl we're going to need for the camper mug that we're using. So ideally I'm only going to put it, be putting this on half of the cup and sort of the back side because we will be putting some glitter on this cup as well. So now I'm gonna take that piece that I had cut in half from the vinyl and I'm just going to measure about how much of the vinyl I'm going to actually need keeping in mind that I also want to make sure that I leave myself a little bit of overlaps just in case if there are any errors or any issues that I might run into. So now I'm going to slice that piece in half because I need just about half of this piece and now we're going to get to applying this to our mug. So now with my mug back in my cradle here, I'm going to put this on about where I want everything to be lined up. I always start with the handled section first because I always find that that's the most difficult section and if I can get it nicely adhered to the cup on this section, I'll have a much easier and smoother time trying to get the rest of the vinyl applied to the cup. So the way I do this is I line this right up and I cut slits with my scissors right on either side of the bottom edge of the cup handle. I then will cut another small sit, slit to kind of fit the handle in between and then I'll cut off a little bit of excess that is there with either my craft knife or my pair of scissors. Once I feel like I have a good handle on where this vinyl is going to go around the handle, I'm going to just take the top portions of my vinyl here and cut the backing off and get those adhered first. And then I'll be able to focus on the center now that the edges are anchored down. So now we're going to take that middle section and peel up the vinyl and cut off that backing and get that middle section applied. That way we can go ahead and be able to get the rest of this vinyl applied to this back half of the tumbler. So I'm going to cut off the little bit of excess that is there and around the handles and make sure I have a nice clean look around my handles here and then I am going to flip the cup away from me because I typically like to roll the vinyl on going away from me versus toward me. I find that I get it on there quite easier that way. I'm going to cut off a little bit of that backing and just very nicely and very tautly pull on that vinyl to that section, making sure that I am not getting any wrinkles or bubbles onto or under the vinyl. That's going to cause any issue when I go to epoxy this. So just rolling that on, you can use your squeegee tool as I've shown you guys before, if that is easier to get you to apply the vinyl, but I'm just going to use my fingers in a back and forth motion for this and just get this all the way up applied until the backing is completely off of the back. Now that the vinyl is on, I'm now going to, of course, clean up my edges. So I'm just going to run my craft knife very gently around the bottom edge here, removing the edge of the vinyl here. You could also use your cup edging tool if you have one of those. I just decided to freehand this just because I was pretty confident that I could get a nice clean rim around the bottom, but you could also use tape if you don't have something like a cup edging tool. 
Now to focus on the top edge, I'm just going to pull that vinyl as tautly as I can toward the inside of the cup rim and then run my sharp craft knife around the inside to cut off all of that excess that I have of vinyl on the inside of the cup. Once that is done, I'm just going to make sure I have a nice smooth surface on both the top and bottom to make sure I don't have any spaces where any epoxy could get underneath this vinyl and cause any weird bumps or any weird looks to my vinyl pattern side of this cup. And then we're going to tape this section off of the cup and be able to apply our glitter. So we're going to just use some painter's tape to go ahead and mask off this section of the cup. We want to make sure that we don't get any glitter or any Mod Podge on this section of the cup. So I'm just going to mask off the edges here of the cup and make sure I get a nice edge along the vinyl that's under the handle covered up so that we can go ahead and move into glittering. So we're going to go ahead and use Unicorn Sneeze and Daisy as well as Thick Tiff and Tiffany Who. I'll link all the glitters down below in the description box. And we're going to be applying these using Mod Podge. So normally I don't care for using Mod Podge as my adhesive for glitter if I'm going to be doing an ombre. But because it was just these two colors and I really didn't feel like I would have too much of a hard time just because they're pretty fine cut glitters as far as the cuts that I chose, I decided that that I would take the risk and attempt to do this in one fell swoop of the Mod Podge application. So I'm putting a nice thin layer of Mod Podge all over sort of the bulk portion of the cup. I try not to focus on the handle right now because I want to make sure that I get the entire cup done first before I go to focus on the handle as we'll only be focusing on the handle with a fine cut of glitter. So once I've gotten the glitter applied and I feel like I have a nice coat, we're going to go down with our glitter colors. So first I am starting with Unicorn Sneeze and so we're going to do a couple up opal white glitters over top of that rustic pink glitter just because I didn't have glitters that matched so in order to sort of cheat glitter this we're going to add those white opal colors that are just going to mimic and pick up the color that is underneath it. So once I'm finished with the unicorn sneeze I will pick this up put this away and then we're going to go in with our thicker cut of the teal blue color and that is going to be thick tiff from my Asia creations. So we're just going to kind of douse that section there and a little bit on the bottom with the thick tiff and once I've done that I now can go in with my finer colors. So you guys know how I like to kind of stack my ombres as I like to move from my chunkiest to my finer cut glitters. And this is just to ensure that I get full coverage over the entire cup and that I don't have any sections of my cup that are bald because of not having enough glue or not having any finer cut glitters to fit in those small spaces. So moving back to our white glitter, we're going to pick up a daisy here. And we're just going to add a little bit of that. I apologize. We're going in with Tiffany Who to finish off the bottom and the portion, bottom portion here of the cup. And then we're going to go back in and I'm going to use Daisy as sort of my final color to literally just help me get everything covered. So I like to focus on sort of my finest white color last because then I can just do sort of a once over of the rest of the cup and I can make sure that I have a full coverage cup all over this entire section of Mod Podge or epoxy depending on what I'm using. This just really helps to kind of pick up and cover up any of the sections that still have any Mod Podge exposed. That way we can go ahead and focus on our handle next. So now for our handled section, we're going to take that Mod Podge brush and we're just going to put a nice layer of Mod Podge on the handle. So with the handle, you want to take your time. You want to make sure you get really good coverage on your handle and you don't have any bald or bare spots along your handle. I always find getting the inside portion of the handle to be a little bit more difficult than obviously getting the outer portions, but really make sure you go over that with a really precise brush of your Mod Podge to make sure you have an even coat of Mod Podge and you have every part of that handle covered. So we're only only going to go over the handle with Daisy. We're just going to use the fine white cut of glitter because of course the white glitter is going to pick up all the beautiful colors or under that and I don't have to worry about having any issues with my thicker cuts of glitters sticking up and making the handle super lumpy and bumpy. So once I feel like I have really good coverage and I've gone back and forth making sure that I have enough Mod Podge all over, I am just going to tap off any excess that I have into a garbage can or into my uh, plate here, my paper here of any excess, and then we will dry this before we seal it and get it on the get it on the turner for a couple of coats of epoxy. So I'm going to go in with about two coats of epoxy to make sure that this cup is entirely smooth before we go in and do any necessary sanding that we need to so we can 
prepared this cup to add our final decals to the cup. So after two coats of epoxy, you guys know the deal. The cup was pretty smooth, but of course we want to take the time now to focus on the top rim of the cup as well as any roughness that may be on either the handle or the bottom rim of the cup. I was really happy and satisfied after two coats of epoxy to see that this was pretty smooth and that I really only needed to go in and address some of those necessary areas like the rims and of course the handle to make sure I didn't have any glitter sticking up or any pooled epoxy. But I'm just going to go around with my my nail file tool here for the top rim and then I'm going to take a 60 grit sanding block to focus on the bottom edge of the cup as well as the handle to make sure I am sanding down any rough bits or sharp parts of glitter that may be sticking up through the epoxy. So once I'm done doing all of my sanding work, of course you guys know I'm going to take this upstairs and clean it with a little bit of dish soap and water. That way we can go ahead and apply our decals. So we're going to add just a little bit of some white washi tape that I picked up from Hobby Lobby to sort of frame out the vinyl that is on this cup. So I'm going to just use my washi tape to frame out the vinyl along the cup handle first. And then I'm going to use some to put a vinyl strip along the bottom edge and of course the other blank side of the the cup as well. So this is just really, you know, the same thing I would do if I was doing like a V-split or if I was doing another cup design that involved vinyl. It just kind of helps break up the design and the aesthetic. Separating your vinyl from your glitter just gives a little bit more of a cleaner look. So you could certainly use washi tape like I'm using just because I don't really like to fight with my Cricut if I don't have to. Or you could certainly take your Cricut or your Silhouette cutting machine and be able to cut some really thin lines of a vinyl and just white vinyl to be able to apply these to the cup as well. So once I feel like I'm pretty satisfied with that, we're going to apply this decal. So this is an offset of the hot chocolate decal that I actually cut and printed, I should say, print and cut on um, some clear water slide. So I just took that image inside of Cricut Design Space and I ended up just creating a small offset of 0.083. That's just th sort of like my go-to offset in a white sparkly vinyl from Tech Wrap Craft. So we're going to go ahead and apply that directly to the cup here right in the center on the glittered side of the cup. And then this is actually going to go back under the or on the turner for another coat of epoxy before we're going to add the water slide and drip and all that beautiful gorgeousness. So now we're ready to apply our water slide. I have just a little container here of some warm water from the sink and I have dipped my water slide that I've already sealed with clear gloss spray paint three to four times to make sure that this is nicely sealed and I don't have any ripping or any bleeding of my inks. I've submerged that into water and I've also taken my hand and just wet the surface of my cup to make sure that I can get a nice slippery surface to be able to apply this water slide easily. So you guys have seen me use and apply water slides before. I'm just going to very carefully carefully smooth that out and kind of get the water slide adhered and centered on the section of the vinyl that I want it to be, making sure that the offset, offset is apparent. Then using my squeegee tool to be able to remove any of the excess water underneath the water slide and between the cup and then dry it off very gently with a piece of coffee filter paper to just dry off any of the excess. That is going to set aside for a little bit and now we're going to get prepared for our drip. So you could and I would recommend that you do go ahead and put your epoxy or your cut back on the turner for another coat of epoxy. I'm going to kind of skip that step and we're going to just go right into adding the drip so I can just do a final coat at the end. And so what I have here is Amazing Clearcast Plus. This is their UV protection um, epoxy, and I have mixed equal parts of this into a medicine cup. So I'm going to mix about 20 mLs of this epoxy, and I feel like that should be more than enough to create a beautiful drip around the top rim of my hot cocoa or hot chocolate cup. So we're going to give this a mix for about three to five minutes. It's recommended for this epoxy. And then we are going to be adding a little bit of some brown acrylic paint to obviously give it that chocolate look or color. So spend three to five minutes making sure you don't have any strings or any um, bubbles within your epoxy before you go ahead and add your acrylic paint because you won't be able to see those ribbons and strings when you've added the acrylic paint. So I recommend mixing first and then adding your acrylic paint in afterward. So I'm gonna add a couple drops of the acrylic paint in, give this a nice sort of swirl around 
around. I'm adding enough acrylic paint to change the color, but without changing the consistency entirely of the epoxy. So now we're going to go ahead and wait. So as you guys know, you certainly could use an additive that would be a thickening agent for your epoxy. For this, I decided to just let my epoxy thicken over time. So it took about 45 minutes to an hour to be to the consistency that I was looking for. And I wanted it to be thick enough to be able to sort of swirl around my stir stick here but I still wanted to wanted it to be pretty drippy so that it kind of started to drip down you know almost about halfway down the cup so now we're just going to take the epoxy stick that I'm using my stir stick and kind of swirl a little bit of that colored epoxy around and we're just going to kind of paint the rim here and by painting the rim here I'm just literally dragging that thick thickened epoxy all the way around the cup edge making sure that I am getting right up to that top edge because of course I can clean off the top rim but I want to make sure that the epoxy doesn't drip down so far that it pulls away from the edge exposing the glitter and the vinyl underneath. So we're going to do this all the way around and as I'm going around the cup you'll notice that the epoxy is starting to drip down. If at any point in time you feel like this is dripping too fast you can always stop the process and clean this up with a baby wipe or some 91% rubbing alcohol or acetone to kind of get this off and start over. Or you can flip your cup upside down and backside down you know back and forth to kind of slow down the flow of your epoxy. So the longer you wait for your epoxy to thicken, the better. And obviously, as I've stated in a couple of my other drip tutorials, you want to make sure that you are using a regular set epoxy, not a fast set, because fast set will cure before you are ready to go ahead and add it to the cup. So definitely recommend that you use just a regular artist resin epoxy versus using something that's going to be a quicker cure and really set super quick. So the final thing that I'm adding here is this is a like polymer clay mix from my Asia Creations called Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. And so I'll link that down in the description box as well. But I had these really beautiful like diamond crystal pieces as well as some white snowflakes. And that's just what I am taking and adding to my drip here to just add a little bit more you know, of some prettiness and, and glitteriness and sparkliness to the drip here. You certainly could add little polymer clay sprinkles or maybe little Christmas trees here, kind of whatever you're feeling. I really love to add little things to these drips. And so when I got this in my huge package of glitter from my Asia Creations, I knew that I would be using this for a holiday themed cup soon. So I'm just going to go ahead and go around and make sure I have an even amount of these all the way around and that there aren't any, any weird bare spots of where there is none of these little polymer or clay pieces and once I'm satisfied with that I am going to put this on the turner so the way that I deal with my drips is once I'm done messing with it once I'm done adding what I need to add I put this right on the turner and allow it to spin until the epoxy has cured up enough that it's not going to start to shift around my cup. So I let this sit on the turner for about another six to eight hours until the epoxy has completely slowed and will no longer flow down or around the cup. And then I'm going to wait for this to cure because this epoxy does take about 24 hours to fully cure before I go in with my final coats of epoxy. So it took one more coat of epoxy to be able to seal this cup in. And so that was kind of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the final results of this cup. as always i hope that you guys enjoyed today's tutorial if you did be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in the next one bye